Good evening, everyone. And thank you for attending tonight's meeting. To those that are watching at home, I also extend our, our, our thanks to uh, the people watching at home. Before we begin the meeting, there's a couple of things. Uh, we, we generally do one, and that's our, our city clerk reads a quote for the week. But I'd also like to make a public announcement that the Sheboygan Transit Public Information Meeting will be held on Wednesday, July 5th at 10.30 a.m. to noon, and then at 6 p.m. through 7.30 p.m. at the Meet Public Library, the Roca Room. And this is to solicit your input on changing the bus routes. There's the uh, transit development program plan that's put in place uh, through a series of years, and one of the things that they look at is, is that route effective and efficient? And they need your input. So everyone is invited to attend those two meetings, public sessions. City Clerk, quotation. Life is constantly testing us for our level of commitment and life's greatest rewards, <clears throat> excuse me, are reserved for those who demonstrate a never-ending commitment to act until they achieve. Thank you very much. Call the seventh regular meeting of the Common Council order. Before I ask for the roll call, I should note that Alderman Vanderweel will not be present today. He is, his grandmother passed away and we extend our deepest sympathy to Alderman Vanderweel and his family. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Uh, absent. Not excuse. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Montemayor, Here. Radke, Here. Ryan, Here. Susha, Here. Vanderweel, Excuse. and Verhasselt. 14 present. Quorum is present. Now it's time to pledge our allegiance to the beautiful country we live in. I'd ask Alderman Groff to please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I, approve, I um, uh, move to, uh, that the minutes be approved as entered on the record. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the minutes? There being none, all those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand approved. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Thomas Leonard to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee <clears throat> as a representative for the Village of Kohler. Term will expire on 4-30-08 and David Gass to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee as a representative for the City of Sheboygan, whose term will expire in 4-30-08, signed by the Mayor. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Move to confirm the Mayor's appointment. Second. Motion has been made and second under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Com appointments confirmed. Crystal Siebert to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Claudia Reinbold, whose term expires 4-30-08. And Vicki Hall to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry to fill the unexpired term of Daniel Verhassel, whose term expires 4-30-07. Signed by the Mayor. Ask for a motion to confirm. Move to uh, confirm the Mayor's appointment as read. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. And Thomas Leibel to be considered for appointment to the Marina and Harbor Committee to fill the unexpired term of Trig Jacobson, whose term expires 4-30-07, signed by the mayor. And if you will please excuse me, it's Tom Leibel. Thanks. And I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Uh, move to confirm. Second. Second. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointments confirmed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Public forum, Madam City Clerk. Um, first on the list is Mike Lipham. And Mike, could you give me your home address, please? Uh, 1908 North 6th Street. Six. Sheboygan. 
and you will have five minutes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. I uh, thank you for being here on the uh, eve of our great holiday and for your public service. I speak to you tonight representing the Greater Sheboygan Committee. We are a small group that operates under some pretty simple goals and objecti objectives and goal, uh, guiding principles. Our goal really, in essence, is to strengthen Sheboygan and our community by provi or promoting good local decision making, by promoting the delivery of essential government services at the best possible cost. On June 26th, we issued an informational white paper regarding the City of Sheboygan's Police Department site selection on this basis. I have copies of that white paper if you did not receive that by email. And for those of you in the audience, if you'd like a copy of that, I will make that available to you. We reviewed information available to that date and presented facts as we saw them. You can dismiss the information we presented, but we feel and felt it was important to get the facts out in a concise format, as concise as possible. You may choose tonight to do more analysis or to negotiate further on other sites. However, we feel after a full review of the information available that the best site to locate our new police building is clearly the 23rd Street site. We base this on the following points. The prior studies that consistently ranked the 23rd Street, that highly ranked the 23rd Street site. In all the studies done since the spring of 2002, including one done by the city, and I think there were four studies done in all, with various scoring systems, the North 23rd Street site ranked first or in the top three in each of those studies. The second point, and perhaps the most important to me, would be the use of the Vandervart, Vandervart site would remove a significant parcel of land from the city tax rolls. The use of the Vandervart site would remove a significant parcel of land from the city tax rolls. This would not be the case for the 23rd Street site. Large pieces of desirable property within the city limits are few. The highest and best use for the Vandervart site would be private commercial development. This site could potentially yield more than $3 million in tax base for the city of Sheboygan. I've been asked, even though the use of the Vandervart site would take some property off the tax rolls, wouldn't building a police station there increase the value of the remaining property? The fact is true that building anything on the Vandervart site would possibly increase the value of the remaining property. The question remains, however, what would increase the value the most? As a general rule, commercial and retail development tends to cause additional commercial retail development. Good examples of this are the commercial retail developments at Deer Trace and Kohler or Washington Square here in Sheboygan. Another good example is here in the city of Sheboygan at the old Imperial Hotel site on Kohler Memorial Drive. One $3 million commercial building has been constructed to date and another one is planned. The highest and best use of the Vandervart property would be complete development of the property as tax paying commercial mixed use property. Placing the police station on the Vandervart site still takes four to five acres off the property tax rolls and would not provide the boost to the remaining property that private development would. The next point is the potential for future shared services. Looking at all the sites reviewed, including the Vandervart site, the 23rd Street location would allow for the most options as we look for future shared services and future growth. And lastly, we believe that a well-defined proposal can be presented to the county that would benefit both the city and the county uh, for a best deal possible. In closing, again, you may choose tonight to do more analysis or to negotiate further on, on for other sites. However, we feel that after a full review of the information available, that the best site to locate our new police Department building is clearly the 23rd Street site. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next on the list would be Susan Hundley.
And Susan, can I have your home address, please? Certainly, 632 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Common Council. Is this better? That's good. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm really here just to speak on one issue, of course, the police station site. I, too, am a member of the Greater Sheboygan Committee and uh, that Mr. Leibham is part of, and I've spoken to several of the members, and while I do not agree right now with the white paper analysis, they have no problem having me express one of my concerns. I did pass out to all of you uh, Exhibit A with the, the Northern Environmental Study that was done in um, May of 2003 on the 23rd Street site. There seemed to be a lot of discussion during the Committee of the Whole whether or not there were Phase 1 and 2 site uh, boring tests done on 23rd Street, there was. The other, uh, as you can tell if you read through all that, and there are three steps, I only gave you the one, the final report. There's two other reports that go with it that you can get from Mr. Kim Verhels. Um, on the agenda for tonight, I would prefer that you do not pull forward the 652 because that, of course, would take you right into negotiations for the 23rd Street site for the police station. I really feel that at least exploring, and Mr. Leibem even said that there is no problem with exploring other options. The resolution 745 being brought in by Alderperson Serta and Berg that authorizes the negotiations between the city and Vandervart and the property and um, Vandervart and also the city with the county. I think that is doing the apples to apples comparison. I think we can do that much and maybe get a little bit better picture. Right now, um, as Mr. Sabinash presented for the Committee of the Whole, there were things that were uh, delegated on the Vandervart site that were not at 23rd. I think that's just doing justice for um, all the taxpayers, and um, I really don't have any further comments. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Susan. <clears throat> Next would be John Berner. And John, can you give me your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. Caught me off guard here. I did. I You're know. next. And you'll have five minutes, sir. Okay. Uh, when I come up here and speak, I am not representing any group. I am coming up and speaking how I feel and how a lot of citizens in this city feel. And at the committee and the whole, last week, there were a lot of questions asked, and some of them didn't even make sense. Before 23rd Street was voted on, 14th Street was taken off the table, and there was a lot of people on this council that wanted Sheridan, uh, Sheridan Park saved. And uh, now you're saying, you want a smaller police station. Before, it was Sheridan Park wasn't big enough. A lot of flim flam in here. There was two city employees that stood up here last week, and I really took note of what they said. They would like the police station staying at City Hall. But what came after is the most important part security. The people feel secure here. That's where you put a police station, where the public feels secure. Who's going to feel secure on 23rd Street? Balrith, Pick and Save, the clinic, the county shed? That is off the beaten track. Banner fight, since you people don't want Sheridan Park, Vanderbart is the next best site. Sure, you're taking something off the tax roll. How many times has this city taken stuff off the tax roll and it never bothered anybody one bit? Just was. County just took some uh, building off the tax roll. Nobody said nothing. So it was a lousy piece of property. 
They still took it off the tax roll. People want security. Over at Vanderbilt, I live on Broadway. We welcome it. The people across Business Drive welcome it. It's security for us, and it's close enough to give people security north to 23rd Street. I'm sorry, I, I just can't believe it. We can spend money on other stuff, but for the citizens, and that's who I'm speaking for, for the citizens of this town, to put it out to give security to who knows who. I thank you. Thanks, John. <clears throat> Excuse me, next will be Lawrence Feltz. And Lawrence, can I have your home address, please? 1818 North 9th Street, Sheboygan. North 9th? Yes. And you'll have five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Alderman, for your time. I was like most citizens in the city of Sheboygan, letting the city, city government do what they thought was best until Act 40 and the abolishment of the police department came along. Now, like more citizens, I've become involved in the, in the uh, way things are done around here. First, I'd like to commend Alderman Ryan and Serta for taking the time for effort and effort in contacting the Vanderbart people. The land there is $125,000 to $175,000 per acre compared to the 23rd Street site, which is $200,000 per acre. The county wants $600,000 for the 23rd Street site. Is this a deal of some sort? Is, is, are we getting a special price? If the land is so vi valuable, why hasn't the county sold it to a developer? I would think the county residents would be upset that the county government has been sitting on valuable land that they could have sold and put on the tax and make taxes on it. The Vanderbart site is the best place for the new station due to location and cost of acre per land. We would, we would allow Alderman, we should allow Alderman Serta and Ryan to see what kind of deal they can get and bring back to this council and see what kind of savings we can get over what we're already seeing. Remember, all of you are spending our tax money. I have seen a post on the internet from the Sheboygan Press which upset me somewhat. The quote was, we're more than a little dismayed that Alderman Bob Ryan and Bonnie Serta seem to want to play real estate broker for the owners of the site of the city's south side. Serta even promises to bring another resolution to this, uh, to this site, even though a similar one has already been rejected by the council, unquote. The only similarity between these two is that it's the same site. The difference is, is that there's 15 acres that we had to buy before and five acres now. I assume that was a forgotten fact and maybe that's the reason why Sheboygan, the, uh, the lack of facts is why citizens are so ill informed in this town. I was part of the, the 2006 class of Sheboygan Police Citizens Academy. It was an eye-opening experience to understand what the officers have to go through and understand the behind the scenes working. Chief Kirk and the Sheboygan police officers are doing an exemplary job with what they have. With 23 known gangs in Sheboygan and all the drugs, we need to supply them with all the tools and the facilities to do their job effectively and efficiently. I would also like to commend Alderman Susha for her diligent efforts to cut costs for this police station. Though I do not think that cheaper building materials is the way to go and removing holding cells would be wise either. These cells are, are to hold suspects while officers are doing breathalyzer testing, booking, investigation, and things of the sort. I would like to remind that all of you have a job here. This is to make citizens' lives in this city better and safer. Finally, everyone here is complaining about the cost of land and taking property off the tax rolls. Well, everyone knows a piece of land that the city owns and is a perfect location and would cost only what it would cost to build the building. And that site is Sheridan Park. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. And finally, we have uh, Marge Sigali. And can I have your home address, please? 2732B North Savannah Circle. 
Chip Lagan. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I have three different topics I'd like to speak on tonight. One, of course, is I'd like to commend all the persons, Bonnie Serta and Bob Ryan, for taking the initiative to talk with the people from Vandevart. And I do underline talk to them and for trying to bring Vandevart back on the table. Being a part of the initial group that talked with uh, Vandevart people, that would be Alderman Serta and Alderman Jeff Racky and myself, we thought it would be a win-win situation for the taxpayers and the citizens of Sheboygan. The most vocal at those meetings was Alderman Racky. He even called all the persons afterwards to say that it would be such a win-win situation. Now I can understand why, when the deal would be better, he has changed his mind on another site. In the police department, we have a person who has given 38 and a half years to the department, 22 of which were served as secretary to the police chiefs. Bonnie Gerber has served this police department and community with professionalism and integrity and who has always been there for whoever needed her. Now as she retires, it will be from the same police station she has known for 38 and a half years. I'm sure her wish would have been if she could have retired from a new police station, but I guess that's only a wish. I'm asking that the council please Look at the Van Devart site along with North 23rd Street site if that's what you need to do. My second issue that I'd like to talk about is the Mark Winkle case. That vote that was taken on the floor at the last council meeting. I feel the mayor and the council should be made aware of the fact that the previous law and licensing committee that I served on and heard part of the case were to recuse themselves from speaking or voting on the issue when it came to the council floor. Both were ignored and I feel by all the person Racky and Myers speaking on the issues, the voting was manipulated. And I do hope that the council will look into this matter. Not only did this man suffer the penalty, but he also suffered public humiliation by this council. The vote might not, be, might not have been illegal, but it was sure uh, borderline unethical. And now to end on a good note, I had the privilege of meeting one of the finest group of teenagers on Wednesday, June 28th, when they visited Pizza Safari. They were so respectful and caring and giving of themselves to this community. When so much is being said today about our teens and what they do wrong, all we have to do is look at this group and know what is going right. And the citizens of Sheboygan owe them a very big heartfelt thank you. And that is the group, church group, that came to help the citizens of Sheboygan to redo their homes and fix porches, etc. And I thank you very kindly for listening to me. And this was super. Thanks. And that should do it. Thank you, Madam City and Clerk. <clears throat> and thank, thank all the citizens who addressed the council tonight. We appreciate uh, your comments and welcome everyone to feel free and confident uh, in addressing the council. The next item on the agenda, I would ask that uh, Tricia Bergman's mom and dad please step forward. Before, before I read this proclamation, I'd like to extend my deepest sympathies once more. You have my deepest sympathies. And it is an honor and a pleasure to extend this proclamation to your family. Whereas Trisha Bergman family has suffered a tragic loss with the death of their daughter and sister, Trisha, and Trisha's unborn son, and whereas Trisha Bergman family has turned their inconceivable loss into efforts to benefit others in our community, and whereas by their efforts and the efforts of many who wish to show their love and honor for Trisha and her unborn son, more than $40,000 were raised on June 25, 2006. And whereas these funds were given to help Bridgeway House, a transitional home for women and children to provide added support and programs for abuse victims. And whereas Trisha's family and friends plan to continue to host an annual event close to Trisha's birthday of June 24th that will raise money to help domestic violence victims. Now therefore I, Juan Perez, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, do hereby proclaim June 24th as Trisha Bergman Day. Thank you. Thank you.
Would you like to say something? Before I make my comments, if anybody would like to leave, we'll give you a couple minutes. Okay, to those watching and to those who are here, to the Common Council, happy 4th of July. I look forward to marching down the street with you tomorrow. It'll be a very delightful day for us. I wanted to speak to you about just a few things that, that I really did not want to address, but I keep hearing from people that I need to address. And I've, I've spoken about that before, and that is the positive versus the negative. Um, I've talked to you about how there's things happening up at the national level, immigration, the budget, the war in Iraq. A lot of people are upset. People get mad, say things perhaps they shouldn't say, and it all trickles down to the state. It happens at the state, and it trickles down to the city and the county, and it gets, that's where it ends up. But we have a fabulous opportunity to not only be positive, but to remain positive and to lead the city positively. A good example of that that I happened to be a very small part of, and I believe uh, Mark Sigali talked about that group just a few minutes ago, was this youth group that came from 10 different states. There was about a 401 different people, mostly youth. They worked on 61 homes in Sheboygan. And mind you, these people are not from Sheboygan. They're from 10 different states. They spent 11,800 hours of work in the city of Sheboygan. And as I visited with some of them, all they could talk about was how beautiful Sheboygan is, how great a community this is, how pleasant people are, how nice people are, how they were nice to them. They worked here for a week, and it was just a tremendous amount of workload for them. And these were young kids. And I was at their final celebration at Urban Middle School. And after 11,800 hours in 61 homes, you'd expect that these young men and women would be pretty tired. No, they weren't. They had so much energy, it was just unbelievable. It, it just pumped me up. I could not believe that the amount of energy they had because they were pleased at their accomplishment. They were happy with what they had done. They had a sense of accomplishment that I think that night, I don't think any else, anything else could have matched. And it struck a chord with me because I know that all of us have that same ability and willingness to do, is to generate and harness our positive energy and to doing good for our community. The other thing that I wanted to point out, and this is one that people have asked me to please say something about that I was reluctant to say anything about, and that is the constant barrage of open records requests that have been hidden City Hall lately. I'm not exactly sure how many. The mayor's office has gotten a lot. I don't know city clerk, different department heads. They're asking for information that's yours. We're not gonna hide anything. Whatever you wanna know, he can know. Sometimes I wonder why that information is being asked, but if you, if you start to connect that, and if, you're, if you start to listen to what some of the people are saying, it's all connected to an effort that's negative, an effort that undermines this council and undermines and second guesses 
the community's vote in the last election. And I'm speaking of a recall effort that's out there. The requests that have been made are varied, but one request in particular was this wall. People want to know how much we spent on that wall. This is the kind of request that's being made. That wall was a safety issue before. That's why it needed to be repaired. Not only was it a safety issue, but it was a professional image issue. I don't think anyone can disagree with me that that looks 10 times better or 50 times better than what we had before, because every time I walked by and touched it, I thought it was going to fall over. But that's the kind of thing that, that, that's being requested. The other thing that has been a hot issue, even in the WHBL, is this calendar. This little calendar that has the recycling calendar and city phone numbers, emergency, snow emergency, winter parking rules, all the information that most people would like to have readily available in their refrigerator or whatever. This is another. There's no secret. Don't tell anybody how much it costs. No, there's no need to make a big mess out of it. I was told that is because my picture is on there, and I'm not, I'm not a, I'm a pretty ugly guy. So what I'm going to do last, next year, I'm going to take the picture out, and we'll just have the information there, and maybe that'll take care of that. But there's a lot of, a lot of negativism, a lot of personal attacks, a lot of politics, a lot of misinformation, a lot of half truths, if that's what you want to call them, a lot of innuendo. Quite frankly, folks, blatant lies being told in the community and at WHBL. And they have done this over and over and over and over again for a whole year or more. And that's okay, because that's freedom of speech. They can, they can, they can attack me every year at the moment they have. I'll take it. I've been doing it. I have no choice. But I do have a choice. Turn it off. So do my friends and my supporters. I point out WHBL because we have, we have had a long-standing heritage radio station and all of a sudden it just decided to be anti-Mayor Perez. And that's okay. I can accept that. But I would ask and I would challenge WHBL to start telling the truth and start providing the correct information. If they don't have that, they can come ask. I've said it before, we're not running city government out of a local radio station that like to entertain people. We've got serious work to do here, and by golly, we're going to do it. <coughs> now, having said all that, I'll be, I'll be the star of the show tomorrow again. At some point, I hope somebody sends me a thank you card that a lot of people wouldn't have their jobs if it wasn't for me. I'm a target. And that's just the way it's going to be. And from the people, all I ask is that you give me a chance to do my job. I know I can do my job. I know I have what it takes. I need support from the community. I need support from the aldermen. All this bickering and fighting and accusations, misinformation, I would hope it stop. And if it doesn't, we're just going to work ourselves through it. I'm not going to stop doing a good job. I'm not going to stop protecting the taxpayers simply because I'm being attacked every day. It hasn't worked for a year. I'm not going to work for the next one, or the next one, or if I'm recall. Now, I've said some pretty bold words, and tomorrow will be the talk of the town again. 10 to 2, 2 to 5, 2 to 6, whatever. I'm free game. Take me. I'm bait. But I'm not going to let the citizens down. I represent an interest higher than my own, higher than anybody else's, and that is the taxpayer. And I will continue to do my job for them. Thank you. All President Berg. Excuse me. Let me let me read. We have next on the agenda. Agenda. We have a hearing to a, to amend the zoning to change the use district classification of property located at 1117 and 1112. Um, 1123. North 27th Street and 1118 and 1212 North 26th Street from class mixed residential to class suburban office classification. If, 
Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Yes, please. Step up here. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Can you just give me your name and address, please, and we'll put it in the record? Uh, Nicole Avina. Nicole. Is A V I N A. A V I N. I N A. And your address, Nicole? 1130 North 26th Street. 1130 North 26th. Okay. Well, my first question is for the 1212 North 26th Street. Um, that address doesn't exist. I believe it might be 1126 North 26th Street. I haven't found that address. I live like on that block and I haven't found that address at all at 1212 North 26th Street. And another question I have is, um, my property is right next to these properties that will be torn down and turned into um, suburban office. And what what I need to know is, what will that do to our property value when we bought? How will that affect us? You know, our our way of life. I have three small children there, and I'm worried about the traffic that it will bring in, um, the safety of the children, and just kind of like the layouts of it and what. I want to know more about it, basically. Okay, what, what we'll do, if it's okay with you, is have uh, Paulette Andrews, the Director of City Development, contact you and give you the answers tomorrow. Would you okay. let us know your phone number? Okay. You um, can give it to me later if you want, or are you, yeah. you, are you staying? <laughs> I'll stay and give it to you. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, you can just write it we right down make sure, <laughs> We want to make sure we address your concerns, okay? okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address a council? Sir. And can I have your name, please? Yes, I'm Bob Gregorski. I represent uh, Gregorski Development and First National Bank. And your address? Address is N8418 North Shore Road, <clears throat> Menasha, Wisconsin, 54952. Okay. Uh, and I can, I can answer those questions. Um, we're not here to talk about 23rd Street. I guess that's a good thing. We're on 26th and 27th Street. And what we have here, this is four properties that are next to Nino's Steakhouse. Uh, it's really the last piece of property on the frontage road of Kohler Memorial Drive that isn't zoned commercial. If you go from I-43 all the way to 16th Street, you'll see that there's only one piece that's not commercial. And it's the stretch between 26 and 27th Street, and we're asking that four houses be rezoned. What we're trying to do is, is put a, a retail banking facility on this piece of property. And the long-term plan for the city of Sheboygan recognizes that this property uh, would be commercial. And the, uh, the specific use that we're asking for is a retail bank, which is generally considered a soft commercial use. Uh, the first thing I'd like to say to the neighbors, I, th I think that there's probably one other letter, an objection letter from another neighbor, uh, that we'll do whatever, it's, whatever is necessary to buffer the piece of property, whether it be building a fence, putting in landscape buffering, uh, whatever it would be necessary. Uh, typically when, and I've done a number of banks in a number of different communities, typically what ends up happening is the, neighbor, the neighbors that object find out that when they find out a bank is coming in, uh, usually they're happy about that because there are a lot of uses in commercial zones that are a lot more obnoxious than a bank. Uh, a bank has hours that uh, generally uh, eight to five, you know, bankers, I don't want to say bankers hours, I guess that's a negative, but they're, they're not, they don't have late night hours, they're generally not open on weekends. So generally the people that live next door to those types of facilities have the benefit of, of being at work when there's any traffic there. Uh, generally a bank has, has a, a four-sided type building. It's usually very well designed, very well landscaped, and is usually an asset to a neighborhood. And, and most banks are in neighborhoods. They're in community neighborhood areas. So generally that's something that, that when the neighbors think about it, they'll usually come back and say, maybe I didn't mean to object to that. Uh, in this case, specifically, the, the, the two neighbors, we, we can't buy every house. So what we've, de we've got six properties that we have under contract. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, it's the last two that, that would pose an objection. But if you go on 27th Street and you look where Nino's is, Nino's actually goes deeper than the six, the six pieces that we have. 
if you go over on 26th Street and you look at the, the commercial that runs all the way up 26th Street, that also goes deeper. So I would say to the neighbors that I think this is probably an advantage for you because uh, once a, a well quality, a well constructed quality building is built there for a bank, uh, I think your property values are actually going to go up. And I think that uh, a doctor or, or a lawyer with Aurora being at the corner, uh, a financial service place, you'll see them kind of scattered out throughout that area. Um, I, I really think that that's something that, that could happen. Uh, the la this piece is really an island of residential. It's the last piece on Kohler Memorial Drive. And I think that, uh, again, the use is something that, that we should all encourage. The, uh, the neighborhood already is a mix of commercial and residential uses. The uh, Nino's is across the street, and, and typically you would think that that would be a, a, a more obnoxious type use, being a bar and a restaurant, but it, it's very well received by the neighborhood, and they do a good job keeping that clean and, and uh, welcoming. Shore West Realty is on the corner. Uh, Aurora has a, a major facility, and they're adding on and doing additional buildings there. There's a Provident office building that sits right next to it. Uh, Luigi's is just a little bit to the, to the west. Uh, the La Quinta Inn is on the same street right up the road, which again backs right up to residential. Uh, and the American Family Insurance Building, all those buildings again back up to residential. Some of them don't even have fences on the back. The, uh, the, the type of building that they're building here is also a business banking facility. It's going to have a retail component with a drive through but it's a mainly a business banking facility. So it's not, it's not like a drive through restaurant where you have traffic coming through uh, one after another. The, uh, the, the last thing is, I was talking about the uh, reduction of market value. Some of the neighbors might think there's a reduction. Um, and, and we've talked with the, with the neighbors. I think that, uh, Nicole, you probably know that um, your, prop your property already has gone up in value because we discussed what it would be worth commercially versus residentially. So again, I think that, uh, I think that, that fear is, is really unfounded. And I would just tell the, the mayor and the council that as a representative of, of uh, First National Bank, we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that the, the, the landscaping and the buffering um, from the bank is acceptable to the neighbors. And, and also that typically right now, the neighborhood is, there really isn't a buffer between Kohler Memorial Drive uh, and their backyards. Um, after this is built, I think it'll actually quiet the area behind them because the building itself, a fence and any landscaping will act as a buffer from the uh, traffic on the uh, Kohler Memorial. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Meyer had a question? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to express that um, I had received the phone call from the other neighbor, and he was not able to attend tonight, but he does object to the rezoning. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. And can I have your name and home address, please? Alan Gabriels, uh, N7010 Highview Drive, Sheboygan. Um, I own Nino's Steak Roundup, and I guess I'd like to say, um, reiterate some of the things that Bob had talked about. Um, he kind of had laid it all out, and those are the things I also agree with. Um, and it's what is happening, I guess, with Memorial Drive at this point. Um, I believe I also have a letter from, uh, from Shore West, Steve Hamer. I believe, I have Susan, that. you have a copy of that, and we had talked to, so we have uh, Steve Hamer is also in favor of, of uh, rezoning this property. So, uh, but uh, Bob had made all the points, I think, uh, pretty well. And I, and I do think that a lot of the traffic, I think if you take a look at that, including our own restaurant, most of that comes from the frontage road, uh, Memorial Drive, 25th Street, and Taylor. And I think that is why originally that frontage road was designed to um, you know, direct traffic down there instead of the residential. Uh, if you look across the street on Memorial Drive on the south side, um, there is no frontage road there in the residential area, and I think the frontage road was built, at least I would assume, for the businesses along Memorial Drive, which probably fits with what we're talking about doing along there. So uh, thank you, Council Members, <coughs> Mayor. Thank you. And that's all I got for today. Oh, one more time. Is there anyone else that would like to address the Council? <coughs> is there anyone else? 
Okay, well, let's, uh, City Clerk Richards, please read a couple of letters that were submitted to her. Right, I received two letters from neighbors and they wish them to be read into the record because as Alderman Meyer said, neither one of them are able to be here tonight. The first one is addressed to myself um, and we do send out letters to property owners within 100 feet of the rezoning so that they are aware of this happening and they're able to come here this evening. First one is from Steve Hamer, owner of Shore West United Realtors. Thank you for the notice regarding rezoning of our neighbors to the west. I'm very comfortable with the rezoning and feel that a bank building would be a great neighbor and improvement for the area. Historically, banks are a welcome addition with limited activity on the weekends. They also tend to do an excellent job of landscaping. I am in favor of the rezoning. Signed, Steve Hamer, president of Shore West. And the next one was addressed to the mayor, uh, Mr. Sokolowski, myself, and Alderman Meyer. I received a letter in the mail regarding a proposed amendment to the zoning map of Sheboygan. The amendment is to change the zoning on four properties on North 26th and North 27th Streets. I live on the next north side property on 27th Street. I am writing a letter because on the day of the public hearing I will be out of state on vacation. My wife and I have lived in our house for 30 plus years, raised a family and made a tremendous amount of improvements and plan on retiring in a few years and would like to continue living in our house. I oppose to this rezoning change for a number of reasons which are as follows. Number one, our traffic problem would increase as it did when the frontage road was put in. Number two, we do, we do have somewhat of a drainage problem in our backyards during heavy rains and winter runoff. What would, be at, what would added blacktop and, large, and a large building do to the um, existing drainage problem? And number three, with Nino's being across the street, it is surprising that our neighborhood is still quiet. I don't believe this will continue with a drive-in bank or office building in my backyard. My wife and I would like to you to take our concerns into consideration when making your decision on this rezoning. Signed, Robert Savella at 1131 North 27th. Thank you, City Clerk. One more time, is there anyone else who would like to address the council? There being none, President Burke. Yes, yeah, thank you, and I move that the hearing to close. Second. A motion to second to close hearing under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, hearing's closed. Paul McGrath. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, before um, moving into the consent agenda, I would like to pull forward document 652. Document 652. That's a document by the Building Use Committee in regard to um, reconsidering um, North 23rd Street site for the new police station. Okay, please proceed. I would make motion that that resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put resolution number 480607 upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to amend it at this time. Uh, after the last be it further resolved, I'd like to add another be it further resolved that would say um, that up to one half of any agreed upon amount between the city and county be placed in an escrow account for a period of five to eight years to be used for environmental remedi remediation and or site specific improvements such as fiber optic lines, et cetera, that will enhance the current and future sharing of services from this location. Second. There's a, mo a motion to amend and a second under discussion on the amendment. On the amendment, uh, you're, I'm adding this is because uh, if you will recall, there is another um, document coming in, uh, 745 from all the persons, Serta and Berg, which has something similar to that in, um, in their document regarding uh, an escrow account. And I think that's a very good idea and I'd like it to be included in what the building use did. But I'd also like to um, move this forward. Um, so that's the reason for moving it forward and um, amending it at this time. Thank you, Alderman McGrath. Any other? Okay, we'll call the roll on the, on the amendment. Okay. Do you need to have the amendment reread? Do you know what the amendment is? You do? Please read it. Okay. Alderman Graf, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, to have, be it further resolved, that up to one half uh, agreed upon amount between the city and county be placed in an escrow account for up to for five to eight years to be used for environmental remediation and or site specific improvements such as fiber optics lines, et cetera, that will enhance the current and future sharing of services from this location, is that correct?
Kishlova? Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Kleunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. And Verhasselt. 14 ayes. Motion carries. And Your Honor, as amended, I would need the resolution to put upon its passage. Motion and second to put the resolution upon its passage as amended under discussion. Alderman Kittleton. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I guess I just need to know, I need this clarified then. How is this going to affect our, our resolution 745? If we're going forward with this um, and we don't know, uh, we have no idea what's going down with the Vandervart property, I guess I need a little more clarification then on this. Can anyone? Paul McGraw. Well, Your Honor, just based on um, what was done in building use and what was discussed in building use, um, this offer basically, except for the uh, amendment now that, that's been added to it, was, was out in the papers, was discussed, uh, was, was never um, really negotiated, so there's still room to negotiate it if this negotiation team is put into place. Um, but what this would do is would allow us to um, to send something to the county to say, okay, this is what we're looking at. What do you think? Thank you, Alderman McGraw. Alderman Kittleson. Okay, then I just want this made crystal clear. We're not. We're just looking at uh, this offer. We're not. We don't have anything on the table yet until we get all the information that we need, um, or that. What's ever been in the paper? Is Alderman McGraw, please. What's ever been in the paper is is there, um, and that, that was all printed in the paper. So um, I don't know if the count, county isn't accepting anything until they get something from us. So. Okay, but I, what I'm saying is, if, I mean, what's in the paper is fine, but still what needs to come out of this council is we just have too many unknowns right here and now, and I need to uh, uh, look at everything before we decide that we're going to send forth any, uh, any type of offer. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I think what this document does is put the cart before the horse in terms of um, we've already set forth a deal to provide to the county, and if um, City Attorney Steve McLean can clarify that, because we already have allotted amounts here, I think it puts us at a disadvantage that we're going in with this amount because I know personally I'm not comfortable with offering this, so I'm not going to support it. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Kittleson, third Thank time. you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I would have to uh, agree with Alderman Serta. I don't feel comfortable putting an offer on the table at this time when we just don't have all the information that we need. Thank you. President Berg. Yes, thank you. This, for me personally, is a difficult vote. I've always supported 23rd Street. I think it is, uh, without a doubt, a campus that will allow shared services into the future and uh, in addition will not uh, uh, take property off the tax base. So I have a dilemma between what has been my personal favorite choice and the due diligence that I feel needs to be considered if we have two facilities to look at, specifically the Vandivar property. Uh, this to me is a, uh, basically will kill the resolution to look at the Vandervart property. I can't see that uh, uh, that we would make an offer to the county, uh, which then they could accept, and then we would go ahead and negotiate with the Vandervart uh, property. So for me, again, uh, it is personally, I guess, a very difficult decision. Uh, uh, and I. Just thinking out loud, I guess with that in mind, not to sway things either way, I will abstain on the vote. Thank you, President Berg. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to support this because at the Building Use Committee meeting, um, Chief Kirk made it very clear to us that he would like to go to 23rd Street. He said this would be a great place for shared services. We could have a shared dispatch. Um, we have Officer Cameron Stewart, I believe his name, and he's on our, our building use committee also. And he was asked what the police had thought about it, and he said all the officers were excited and they wanted to go to 23rd Street. So I will support this. 
Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor Perez. Um, at this time, I really would like to see more information on the Vanderfart situation. I'm afraid that, that uh, 652 uh, really stops the discussion. I think we're in a better position to negotiate in either direction if we have all the information in front of us. So I'd like to, to see us proceed uh, to gather all the information on Vanderbilt. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Manny, sir. Thank you, Honor. Uh, my question has to do with the timeline. Uh, what does this resolution, what would the other resolution mean in relationship to our architect's work and their progress? Currently, we have a site. They're working in that direction. What would these, either one of these mean? I don't want to mess up the progress. The progress is not going to be disrupted at any, any, on any account. The construction is scheduled to begin in March, provided that we can work through this by August. Okay. When the um, request came in to include to, or to look at 26, 23rd Street, I was pretty clear that that for all I wanted to look at because I did not want the timetable disrupted. If this council chooses to go any other direction, you may sacrifice that timetable. But as it stands now, everything is online. I mean, it's on track. I don't see it being uh, out of track at all. But I do see it getting out of track, or at least in my mind, if we start looking at any other sites. Alderman Ryan, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in regards to negotiating with both the county and Vandervart, um, I believe to, uh, to, to kill any one possibility, um, definitely uh, the city loses a lot of leverage on the other. Uh, the, the art of negotiating is if you know that the people, that your buyer wants your property, especially if it's his only choice, um, you can pretty much hold your line and, and, and hold your price. Uh, keeping the Vandervar property alive and exploring it at least will give the city some, some bargaining leverage. Also, regarding the timeline on the Vandervar property, uh, both North 23rd Street and Vandervar are both uh, slab on grade type construction. Uh, they're both similarly sized parcels, uh, and I believe that uh, there will, no, will not be a delay. Uh, the architectural uh, end of, of the uh, uh, <coughs> operation can continue forward. Um, my goal is to have no delay, and I will not support any resolution that does, uh, does delay the building of the police department. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Okay, please call the roll. <clears throat> this is a resolution, <clears throat> excuse me, as amended. <clears throat> excuse me. Berg. Serta? No. Groff? Aye. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Cleunas? Yes. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Nine eyes, four, four no's, and one abstention. Motion carries. President Burke, consent agenda. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would uh, move that uh, we file all the ROs, uh, uh, accept and adopt all the RCs, and pass all the general ordinances. Is there a second to that? Second. Second. Under discussion, uh, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like a separate vote on 7-4. We need to amend the encroachment. I'm sorry, 7-4? Yes. Separate vote. I'd ask uh, are you, Would you like motion? me to proceed? Yes, please. OK. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage. Thank you. Discussion. Thank you, and I'd like to amend this document. I'd like to amend the encroachment ordinance to incorporate the plan commission's recommendation on the first page of 7-4, uh, the third line from the bottom. It comes uh, with a statement. It starts with, with the condition the city of Sheboygan shall have access 
to the seawall tiebacks, which are located underground below the deck and sidewalks within the city public pedestrian way. And I'd like that added to um, this document. So that's a motion to amend. Is there a second to that? Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion on that? Alderman Barn, do you wish it to discuss that or something else? Okay, we'll, we'll vote on the uh, amendment. Everybody clear on that? We just do a roll, not a roll. You need a roll call? No, no, no. All those in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Yeah. Need a motion as amended? Yes. Yes, I would move that the motion uh, as amended be put upon its passage. Second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Kittleson, Cleunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Berg. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Haldeman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to pull forward uh, for uh, document number 718. Uh, for a separate vote and also an explanation on the committee's discussions on this issue. Okay, I need you to make a motion to put the, uh, to uh, accept and adopt the report of committee. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Second. There's a second under discussion. Salary and grievances, uh, Alderman Susha, would you please answer Alderman Barnes? Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, there was a lot of discussion on this topic and uh, the vote was uh, two, to support lowering the starting pay for all incoming uh, non-reps. Uh, and there were three people that voted against it. And just to give you a little bit of history, what happened is uh, earlier this year, when the council voted to give pay increases to the non-reps in 2005 and 2006, at the last paragraph in that document also said that we were going to adjust the entire salary grade for the non-reps equal to the pay increases in 2004, 05, and 06. So there was roughly an 8.5% increase in the pay table, the entire pay table. And uh, the argument in salary and grievance was that in the private sector, the starting pay for every position within a company does not go up every year. So um, uh, Ed Sirk uh, gave uh, his opinion. Uh, he believes that we should keep increasing the starting pay. And um, actually, I would encourage all of you to vote no on this document because I still feel very strongly that we do not need to start kids right out of high school um, at over $30,000 a year. Um, you know, I, I initially was surprised at uh, the, the new pay grade for job grade two starting out at $28,500. But as we dove into the subject, what we found out is that we don't have any jobs in the city in job grade two. We start in job grade three. So that means with a high school diploma, you can walk into the city and start out at $30,779 a year. And I just think that's way too high. Um, so the motion was to roll it back. So for example, in start, instead of starting a job grade three at basically $30,800, we'd go back to what it was, which is $28,200, which again, coming right out of high school, starting at $28,200 is a pretty good pay rate. In fact, I think there's some people coming out of college that would agree that that would be a good pay, pay rate. Um, but the, the, there was another situation in our, uh, that came up, and it's actually document 7-64 that's on our agenda tonight. And the question was, well, what happens? Um, the police chief secretary is retiring, and the, the candidate that they wanted to hire into that position has been with the city for a number of years. So she's going to be going from a union job to a non-union position. But she's been with the city for so long, you can't really take her down to the lowest point of the pay grade. But we have a mechanism in place for that. Um, when Mr. Sirk does interviewing, he has the capability of um, some latitude. When he looks at a pay range, he can start somebody within the bottom third of that pay range. Um, if it's above the bottom third, he know, needs to go on to council to get approval to start somebody at a higher point in the pay range. And we did do that in this particular situation. We met in salary and grievance and we decided, decided to start the replacement for the police chief um, at a higher point in the pay range. So what I'm saying is we have a mechanism in place. If you have an experienced candidate within the organization who wants to apply for a different job, we just follow the process. So 
eventually, now that we're going to be promoting this person into the, the chief secretary position, eventually we're going to have a vacancy. And I would imagine that we will eventually run out of city employees to start in these vacancies. So eventually we will hire someone from outside. And my point is, is that many of these positions don't require more than a high school diploma. So I would say that we can roll back the starting wages on some of these positions. And keep in mind, Ed Zurich has the leeway to do negotiating up to one third in the lower part of the pay scale uh, when he's offering these jobs. So the mechanism we have in place works quite nicely. And um, I, I just would ask that you actually vote no so we can um, actually pass this and lower the starting pay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Solution. Alderman Barn, sir. Thank you again, Your Honor. <clears throat> when I first saw this uh, uh, general ordinance, uh, and looking at our budget situation for next year uh, and the finance committee uh, Rich Gebhardt has mentioned initial numbers for next year at a deficit of uh, two million to two point five million dollars for the city and I thought this general ordinance where uh, is a, a step in the right direction for the taxpayers with these future non-represented employees to at least in the future try to hold the line on wages thank you I, and I'm going to I'm going to vote no Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Kittleson? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I just wondered if, if Ed Zurich would be able to address this. Um, I know he, he, I'm going on his recommendation that we not do this, and I don't know how many high school graduates that, he, that we do hire within the city. If granted, he could, but uh, I just don't know. We need qualified candidates, and they need to be hired at the, at the proper salary. So could, if he? Yes, yes. Thank, thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Mr. Zurich, would you please approach the podium? Yes, yeah, so thank you, Mayor and Council. A um, couple things I'd like to comment on, on Alderman Susha's comments were, I, we, we, don't, we don't hire high school graduates at 28,000 a year. I mean, I, I've been around seven, almost seven years now, and I don't know where that assumption came along with, but it's not true. We don't hire someone at 28,000 a year. To address the, the, the salary range itself, we did not address, um, adjust the ranges back in 2003. Um, our, uh, the, the non-rep salary pay plan is extremely out of kilter. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'd like to see gasoline at 35 cents a gallon, but it isn't anymore. Uh, our ranges have gone, have not increased to adjust the market of other salaries, be they private or public industry. Um, one of the complications we're having today is that we are gonna bring later on a document in that, that supersedes my authority, supersedes salary agreements authority, but must have approval to grant someone a raise which must be brought to council. That's how far off we are with our ranges, that if we're gonna make a move to promote somebody, that the salary we want to offer that person has to go to common council. It, it shows the, 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 how, how poorly our, our pay plan is, is set up right now. We are very far behind in our ranges. And, I, and even at this point, with the changes that, that we recommended uh, some months ago, we're still far behind. Any question? Okay, thank you. Alderman Clayunas, you're next. Uh, I was one of the council people who voted against this, and my reason was that I believe the non-represented employees have been scapegoats at times in terms of um, taking some cuts uh, because we can do it much easier than the, through a bargaining uh, agreement. And I feel as if um, they shouldn't be the ones that have to take it all the time. And I agree with Ed that um, qualified people, we don't just take someone off the street. We have an interview process. We have an application process. And I'm sure we're getting a, the best qualified person for even that low salary, or that starting salary, I should say. Thank you, Alderman uh, Oh, President Burt, you're next. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I had uh, been uh, Alderman Stucha's predecessor on salary and grievances, and the beginning of the year with the previous committee, we set a number of goals for the salary and grievance committee to consider. One of them, uh, I think, where uh, Alder Person Stucha and uh, Mr. Sirik agree is to review the non representative salary grid. Uh, that was discussed at some length in the previous Salary and Grievance Committee, and it reached the level that the feeling was that, that should be a primary goal 
of uh, the current committee to look at that, to review it, and see if there are changes that need to be made in terms of inequities. And I do believe that uh, rather than cutting and pasting solutions per each individual uh, position that comes up, I think that the long range goal would be to uh, fulfill that objective and pursue really that study to see how we fit in vis-a-vis uh, -vis our comparison with other like communities and hopefully the private sector. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Byrd. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. I have two questions for Ed Sirk. Is that okay? Yes, but we need to have him step up to the podium. Mr. Sirk. The two questions I have on, on this twenty-eight or thirty thousand dollars that we're talking about here, what type of positions typically are we filling at those levels? And then question number two, could you give a rough summary of the comparisons you talked about with the private sector versus what we're paying just rough numbers? Are we way off in our comparison? Are we close? Well, we're, we're in a process of studying that right now, but uh, like we don't have, as you mentioned, 28,000. We don't have any positions available right now we would offer that to anybody. I mean, it's, there, it's a grade that just is not filled. We, um, when we advertise for a position, we post for a position, we put down, you know, five to ten years experience in a specific field. Um, you know, we can tell pretty well without doing a lot of study what the market brings in. And uh, you know, if you if you receive 100 candidates and only uh, uh, 10 or 15 of the candidates are within your your market market envelope, you know that either your salaries are too low or the market is just beyond our reach. What I've seen in the past few years is that we probably are on the low side, salary-wise. Um, uh, in, in most non-rep positions, we, we do require quite a bit of experience. They're not beginning-level positions. Um, we look for both public and private experience in, in filling these positions. So um, I came out of the private sector. I have a pretty good feel what, what they're paying out in the private sector compared to in the public. And I'd say, by far, um, we're not in middle, probably a little below middle in terms of overpaying our positions. So. Alderman Manning, do you have a question for Mr. Sarek or just? No, no. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sarek. Oh, okay, please stay. Okay, mm -hmm. Alderman Manning, you were next. Let me ask the question. Alderman Warren. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Surik, uh, when you say you're, that we're a low, low on the salary end, uh, how does the city benefit package uh, compare to the private sector? Uh, you may, the, the new employee may be sacrificing something in salary. Is the benefit package that you're offering these people exceed the private sector and therefore might be a little more apples for apples comparison? Thank you. Yeah, I would say uh, in general yeah, probably our, our, private, our, our benefit package is someone above the private sector uh, mm -hmm. in terms of pensions. We don't, uh, we don't have a 401k, we do have a 457, which, you don't, which is similar to a 401k plan in the private sector. We don't match that. Where some companies will have a defined benefit plan and a defined contribution plan. We have basically a defined, defined uh, benefit plan, which is like the old pension plan. So, I, and a lot of companies have gotten away from that. Um, but in the public sector, we are required by law um, our employees are in the uh, Wisconsin uh, pension plan, which is governed by, by the state. That they, that anyone working over 600 hours a year, uh, the, the city or any municipality or state government is required to contribute to the pension plan. In terms of other benefits, holidays, vacation, I'd say we're pretty much, pretty much in the middle. Um, th there are no, in, in, the, in the public sector, there are no frills in terms of, I mean, we don't get turkeys for Thanksgiving. We don't have Christmas parties. There's none of that's all that's gone. There is no contribution in terms of, you know, uh, happy times to public employees. are pretty well restricted to pay and benefits and, and other 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 items that you might see in the private sector. Thank you, sir. Over many. Thank you. Uh, just for another information, it's important to, to say that. Uh, Non-reps have no steps in their salary. They have their annual increase, uh, but no steps as uh, the union folks do. So that is an issue that impacts people over time. We should be aware of that. Secondarily, as we have no one hired at these categories, the discussion is quite theoretical, perhaps representational more than anything. I don't think the symbolic value um, 
is worth that much time or attention. Other issues of real significance and impact uh, that we will decide on this year are much more important. Therefore, I'm going to vote to file this. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Okay, there being no more, please call the roll. And an I vote would be to accept and adopt and file the ordinance. Hannah. Aye. I'm sorry? Yes. yes. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. No. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Ryan. Aye. Susha. No. Verhasselt. No. Boren. No. Berg. Aye. And Serta. Oh, I didn't do Alderman Graf. Oh, tisk tisk. <laughs> Alderman Graf, what would you like to vote? Alderman I. That would make a difference. <laughs> Eight eyes and six noes. Motion carries. Okay, we've got uh, <laughs> consent agenda 7 1 to 7 23, with the exception, as you know, 7 4 and 7 18. Please call the roll. Okay. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 eyes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 7-24 through 7-27 to be referred. Report of officers 2728 by the city attorney stating that the resolution number 520607 by Alderman Hanna and Ryan authorizing the mayor in his discretion to remove committee members for failure to attend meetings in his, in his opinion is, if adopted would be null and void as contrary to law. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. Uh, our intention here was to uh, encourage participation. I need a motion to uh, accept and file. I have a motion to accept and file. Second. Second? Okay. Under discussion, if you'd like. Can I yes. Continue, you, please. Uh, our intention here was to try to encourage better attendance by committee members. Uh, unfortunately, that was in opposition to existing statutes. Which is understandable. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Anyone else? President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Aaron. I, I like the idea, I guess, of uh, having accountability. And if I understand the city attorney's rulings, nothing would stop uh, uh, a resolution coming in to publish uh, anybody who has had three or more unexcused absences as part of the record of committee. Would that meet, uh, uh, would that be an acceptable uh, uh, alternative, and I guess that would be directed to the city attorney. Thank you, President Berg. Uh, attorney McLean. Uh, yes, Alderman Berg, I think that would be fine. In fact, uh, I had suggested to uh, Alderman Hanna and Alderman Ryan that, that uh, you know, it's kind of the sunshine law uh, where you report the attendance, and I, I think that in and of itself has a salutary effect on people attending. If, uh, if it becomes sort of public, the fact that people aren't attending, that. Uh, Number one, either that could be addressed uh, by the council. If you cho chose to attempt to remove someone from office, you could do that early on if you knew you know, on an ongoing basis what the attendance was. But secondarily, just the mere fact of that information being out there to the general public uh, has, has an effect, I think, uh, on hopefully people uh, at attending more meetings. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I think this uh, resolution would have encouraged participation or attendance at the committee meetings. And sometimes people don't come for a variety of reasons. Sometimes very le legitimately they can't be there. And maybe if we get this information back to the council and somebody is removed, because the committee should be effective. They should have enough people there to be effective. And if for some reason they can't, then we should take some action so that the committee can meet and be effective. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would just like to ask Attorney McLean, um, 
on the Commission of Aging, we are reviewing the bylaws right now, and that is in the bylaws that you miss two um, meetings, you can be removed. Is that different, or is, are the bylaws wrong, or, you know, because we need to fix them if they are? Attorney McLean? Uh, yes, uh, if that's what the bylaws currently state, I guess it would be my opinion that the, uh, you can't ipso facto say that you miss so many meetings that you're subject to removal. I think the statutes are pretty clear that the process is for removal. Somebody needs to bring a complaint to the council, and it's the council vote by three-fourths vote for cause to remove somebody from the commission or board or committee. And, uh, you know, it's a due process right for that individual to, uh, to then either put up their defense or uh, at least they become aware of it, and it's the council's decision to remove the people as opposed to at a committee level uh, or a mayoral level. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess my basic question is this. If a person, and I have this situation going on in one of the committees I chair, I've seen this person once in the last year, and would that come from the committee level to the council, or would that have to be from a citizen like we have with the library board, or what would the due process be to start this? Because, I mean, this, this gentleman, one time in, in, in a year, and it's not serving our board, and at times we've had trouble getting quorums, and that doesn't help either. Attorney McLean? I think it could come from any of those, uh, from an individual, from an alder person, from a committee, uh, with a, uh, uh, I guess, a, probably wish to be consulted, but uh, it'd be a matter of following the statutory process, uh, presenting the charge to the council, and uh, you know, then, then presenting that if the council wants to proceed with charges against the individual, uh, give them an opportunity to be heard and uh, go that route. Uh, you know, it could be in some of those circumstances where if there's constant absence, Maybe they'd be willing to voluntarily resign. Uh, you know, maybe there's a conflict that nobody's talked to them, and that's why they're not coming to the meetings or something. And uh, maybe it's as simple as that that uh, they'd be willing to voluntarily resign. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Follow up? Yes, as a follow up. Um, so I guess the question would be: Would it be proper, for example, to contact this person as a chairman and ask if he's really still interested? And it's, it's a, you know, this, these people are reputable, they're busy. Sometimes these things, yes, I'll do it, and all of a sudden they just don't have the time to do it. And instead of dragging them through this, would it be proper for a committee chairman to just contact these people and just say, are you interested? If not, could I please have a resignation so we can put somebody on the board who would be able to, to do the job? I don't see anything illegal about doing that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Attorney McLean. But I would say, Your Honor, just to follow up, the. The statutory standard for cause, one of the items includes neglect of duty. So it's not, it doesn't say missing meetings, but it's neglect of duty. But I think you, it's fair extrapolation if you've only gone to one meeting in the last two years and the committee has met 26 times, uh, something isn't, isn't clicking there and there's uh, some duty being neglected. So. I don't think so. Okay. We have a motion to accept and file 7-28. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 7-29 lies over. 7-30 through 7-44 to be referred with the exception of 7-34, which will be referred to public protection and safety instead of public works and transit. Please make that notation. Resolutions introduce three, seven forty-five by Alderman Sella and Berg, authorizing negotiations between the city of Sheboygan and Vandervoort for the property known as the Vandervoort site and with the county of Sheboygan for the property known as North 23rd Street site. Alderman Sella. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion? Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to ask 
um, for an amendment to this resolution that we take out the portions that reference Vanderbart, and I'll give an explanation as to why. Okay, please do. Make your amendment, vote motion to amend. Make a motion to amend um, document um, 745, where the portion where it reads a resolution to the first, be it further resolved that those portions be deleted. Okay, is there a second to that motion? She's she's on. Your your yeah. mic is on. I'm asking that the first portion of the document referencing Vandervart from the beginning, a resolution to the first, be it further resolved, be deleted. Got that? The first, second, third, and fourth paragraph be deleted? Correct. Is there a second to that uh, motion? Second. Please proceed under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm asking this because this was my biggest fear that we wouldn't look at Vandervart earnestly, and I promised them that um, we wouldn't put them through this again. And I believe by the decision that the council made previously, I personally think we took away our leverage. Um, I thought it was best that we keep things at um, an even keel in terms of negotiation. The document 652 outlines for us the exact amount which we'll offer the county. Um, and Steve, I don't know if you could clarify too, we can't go in and offer a different amount. Aren't we locked to this resolution, what we just approved? Um, and I'm not going to, I personally will not waste Vandervart's time. Thank you, Alderman Serda. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I myself, uh, being involved uh, in the, the Vandervart property, uh, do agree with all the person Serta on this. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense to to try to barter and negotiate with your with your hands tied. Um, I do not uh, personally um, want to be involved with uh, not negotiating uh, in good faith with uh, with anybody and uh, with wasting anybody's time. So I uh, I do agree. Anyone else? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm just wondering if someone could explain why we need to approve this. I think that the previous situation pretty much approved it. So I guess I'm just confused. I don't see a need to do anything other than file this document. So just if I could have an explanation why we remove Vandervaart, what's the difference? You can accomplish that by voting no on the resolution we put upon its passage. Okay. Everybody clear on that? Alderman there for Hessel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to thank Alderman Serta and Ryan for the work on this. Even though the uh, 23rd Street document is moving forward, I'd like to thank them for the work because I think it did add a little clarity to the decision making uh, to this point. Thank you, Alderman Hessel. Okay, please call the roll. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm, I'll make a motion to file this document. Second. Motion and second to file. Under discussion on the file. There being none, please call the roll. Clay Yes. Yeah. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 7-46 by Alderman Graf, Meyer, and Kittleson, authorizing intern into a licensing agreement for 2006 with the ASCAP. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Because this involves money, do I need suspension? So yes. I'll ask for suspension. Second. There's a motion to second to span. Is there any objection? Please proceed. Then, Your Honor, I move that this resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, just so that everybody's aware of this, this is to um, pay the license fee for um, any time we have band concerts and celebrating services where we may use a, um, a song that may be, um, um, I just lost my train of thought, uh, copyrighted, thank you. Um, and uh, uh, rather than getting sued, we need to uh, expend for this license. Thank you, Alderman Graff. Anything else? Please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. 
Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. And Quayunas. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 7-47 lies over. 7-48 through 7-50 to be referred. Report of committee six, 751, 752 to be referred. Report of committee seven, 753 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7081 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the uh, report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second, second. Motion and second, under discussion. Yes, it's Joseph Burton here this evening. He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Okay, any further discussion on that? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Quayunas and Manny. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 754 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7128 based on failure to reveal a violation and having a conviction relating to the license activity. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I accept, uh, make a motion that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. Under discussion is Jordan Shea here this evening. He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Recchi. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 755 by the Committee of the Whole submitting RC number 540506 by finance and re resolution number 270506 by all the person Groff authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for police facility and city hall architectural services. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I would like to make a motion to have this document referred back to finance. Second. Motion and second to refer back 755 to finance under discussion. There being none, Dean Rocco. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Report of committees eight, seven fifty-six by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the two hundred six budget. Um, Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted, and the resolution be put upon its passage. Motion and second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Serta, Vice you. President Serta, excuse me. I'd like to um, request to divide the question specifically to the amount earmarked for land acquisition costs to the county in the amount of 504866 uh, There's an amendment. Is there a second to that amendment? Second, under discussion. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I just, um, giving an explanation, I, again, I don't feel comfortable in arriving at that number and making an offer. I would still like to negotiate and bring that down or at least have our parking lot um, um, at least give more credence in terms of its value. Anything else? Attorney McLean. I guess my only comment is that uh, you just passed a resolution authorizing to make an offer for that dollar amount to the county. Uh, oh, I, I'm sorry, I hit it and didn't. Connect. Okay. okay. Uh, you previously passed a resolution authorizing to make an offer in that dollar amount for, to the county. I, I think it's incumbent if, if you're going to make that offer in good faith that you have the money behind it to make the offer. Okay. Just an observation. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Montemayor. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. Attorney McLean uh, expressed what I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, it's important, though, for myself, Steve, that I didn't support the original resolution, that I would still not support the, the spending of it as well. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Susha. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I have a question about the Matlin money. Is that right now currently in the general fund? I believe it's in, uh, I'm not sure. And Mr. Gephardt not here, we can find out for you tomorrow. Does that make a difference? I just think it would be good use. Matlin money is supposed to be used for a one-time expenditure, and we have about 600000 I believe, in that account. The last time I talked to Rich, I thought he said it is in the general fund right now, but I think that would be a good use of the Matlin money for the land acquisition. So perhaps we could do some sh shuffling of money um, at the next meeting, at the next um, meeting, if the committee would desire. Thank you, Alma Suja. Okay. We will call the roll. Uh, Somebody? Okay, first of all, we're going to call the roll on either just that one issue or the other part of the resolution. Which one would you prefer? We could do that one first. One first. Okay, this will be to approve the appropriations for the $504,866 for land acquisition that's pulled off of this transfer letter. So just that. Okay. Wait, wait. As, as amended? Is that... Is that no, no, no. We're just dividing the questions, so dividing I'm splitting off that one issue okay. from the rest of the resolution, so we can have a separate vote on that one land acquisition issue. And I vote would be in favor of. The and I vote would be in favor of the transfer of appropriations. Yes, for five hundred four eight sixty six. And consistent with the previous resolution you just passed not long ago with the county. Okay. So this, this is code. the divide the question one. Um, let's see here. We have Ryan. Yes. Susha. Aye. For Hasselt. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? No. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Racky? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. And then the next one will be on the balance of the appropriations resolution. Susha? For Hasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 757 by finance recommending authorizing the transfer of, of appropriations in the 206 budget. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. That RC, um, which is for the uh, transfer of appropriations in the 2006 budget for um, the um, Wisconsin Retirement Fund and Social Security, as well as the next RC, which is authorizing um, a transfer of appropriations into the 2006 budget, which is for um, also um, the um, appropriation for the library fund for sick leave and vacation severance payments. I would move that both RCs be accepted and adopted and both resolutions be put upon their passage. Motion second to put 757 and 758 upon her passage under discussion. There be a non, please. Hold on. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm wondering if, if we can vote on 757 separately. Rather, can we separate them? I'd prefer to vote separate on each of them. I need to abstain from 757. Okay. Or will or will that not make a difference? It, if, if that's your wish? That's it. That's it. Alderman Groff? Just 757? Sure. Second. Who, who seconded? Are you okay with that? Okay. Please call roll on 757. Thank you. Um, Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Epstein? Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Groff, 758, please. And Your Honor, I'd move to, um, that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage for 758. Second. Motion second, under discussion. There be a none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Montemayor, Radke, Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Verhasselt. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 759, lies over. 
760 to 762 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 630 and RO by the City Plan Commission recommending rezoning property at 1117 and 1123 North 27th Street and 1118 and 1226 North 26th Street from mixed residential to suburban office. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion that we accept and adopt the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 656, resolution number 520607 by Alderman Hanna and Ryan authorizing the mayor the discretion to remove committee members from committees, boards, commissions for failure to attend meetings, whether excused or not, except that this authority shall not apply to standing committees and committees, boards, and commissions that are elected by the Common Council. Alderman Hanna, all we need is a motion to file. Mr. Mayor, so moved. Uh, There's a motion and second to file under discussion. We've heard the discussion earlier. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 678, resolution number 530607 by Alderman Manny, adding one additional member and ex official member to the short term committee employee remuneration. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, move to put upon passage resolution. Second. Motion and second to put resolution 678 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 675, General Ordinance Number 80607 by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny, amending the Municipal Code so as to add or change various positions from the Department of Public Works Wastewater Treatment Plan Table of Organization. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. Thank you. I would just like to um, commend the uh, people who are running the wastewater treatment plant for being proactive. They've identified that a good portion of their workforce is going to be retiring in the next couple of years. And when you're operating a facility of that nature, you need to have multiple years of training and pass a lot of exams uh, before you reach the point where you're capable of, of running it on your own, you might say. So I, I want to just compliment them on identifying the need to get some people into training. Um, so I, I would ask that you um, accept this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was just wondering, is there any cost connected with this uh, uh, that someone would have available yes, to them? Uh, Mr. Doe, would you please step up? Mayor and Council, uh, where do I begin? I've given this presentation to a couple committees uh, those of you that were on those committees were, were not privy to all of the, the details. There is additional cost to, to adding two, two positions. The total cost would be somewhere around $120,000 a year. This is uh, at today's rates, but what I've looked at in, in the organization is we have one classification of oper wastewater operator, and that's a pay grade uh, 14, which earns around somewhere between, I think, 18 and, and $22 an hour. What I propose is that we actually create classifications, uh, a operator trainee classification where an employee comes in at a lower pay grade, a pay grade eight, making about $15 an hour. And he's at that pay grade. The, the, this proposal is actually somewhat of an evolution. They come in at a pay grade eight. They get one years of experience. They uh, take some uh, classes to get learn uh, to get certifi certified in wastewater operations, and after one year they have to have that license. If they don't have that license, 
they can't work at the wastewater plant. Okay. So if they don't get that license, they'd actually, if they came from the public, we'd have to let them go. If they came from the other part of the union, uh, uh, other part of public works, they'd have to go back to that part of public works. But if they pass that certification, they evolve to what would be an operator two, or operator one, from a trainee to an operator one. They would be in that classification for a period of five years, or until they had five years, more, four more years experience, five years, at which time they have to get higher levels of sat uh, certification, additional certification, uh, and they would, and that would be a pay grade 10. Uh, at, at, at five years, if they met them other certification requirements, they could move up to an operator three class, operator two classification, and they would, which would be a pay grade 12. And at the end of 10 years, they would move up to the current pay rate that they are. I've been, uh, the union has someone problem think we're creating tiers for operators. We're not. It's all up to the employee to, to learn the skills, uh, to, to pass the certification and get the experience. They would get the experience, but they have to be able to pass the test and get the higher certification. Uh, okay. Alderman Meyer, do you have a question for Mr. Doe? Uh, just a comment. Oh, just a comment. Thank you, Mr. Doe. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, thank you, Mr. Doerr. I just want to comment that our um, wastewater department is fantastic. Uh, the leadership is wonderful, and without clean water in our city, we would have no people, we would have nothing, and the water in our city is fantastic because of the wonderful job that they do. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Cuyunas. Yes, Your Honor. I also want to commend Mr. Dorr. I also think it's proactive because he mentioned in his explanation that a number of the duties that higher graded employees are doing can be done by this person, starting out person, maintenance duties, uh, things that are, don't require the skills that a, a person who's studying wastewater management and has certification has. So I think what he's doing is actually saving us money because these people would be doing grass cutting, other things along, around the plant that can be done by someone with more general uh, work experience and not specified uh, worse wastewater treatment training. So I think it's a good way to save money because you're saving on a higher salary at certain times and also vacations and other times when maybe some of these things can be taken care of that way as well. Thank you, Alderman Clayunas. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Important to note that uh, right now they have uh, fewer employees than they've had years ago. Hiring two additional folks will not change that fact, so they are operating more efficiently. Secondarily, it's good to remember that cost savings have been secured because of the turbine. Uh, I forget the name of the turbines, but, capstone. pardon me? Capstone. The capstone turbines. So certain numbers of dollars are being saved in 2006, and those dollars increase in the next several years coming. So they've been wonderfully proactive, not only in preparing for the future, but in being very efficient in saving dollars today. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Okay, please call the roll. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 763 will go to public protection and safety. 764, a resolution by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, Kittleson, and Manny establishing the initial rate of pay for the new administrative assistant to the police chief, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put oh, upon its passage. We need a motion to suspend. Oh, sorry. I move to suspend the rules. Second. There's a motion to second. Is there any objection? Please proceed. Okay, I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second, under discussion. Thank you. I would just like to say that um, the candidate that was chosen for this position has, I believe it was approximately 20 years of service within the city, and um, being that she was up for a 5% uh, pay increase next year under the steps of longevity in the union, it was prudent to give her a 6% pay increase uh, to give her uh, the opportunity to proceed with this uh, position. So I would ask that you approve this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, at the salary and grievance meeting when we discussed this, um, Deputy Chief Weiss, Deputy Chief uh, um, Mr. Shervin, and Chief Kirk spoke very highly of this person that they're hiring. So I think it's a good move. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Also, uh, important to note, helpful to note, 
that the new hiree will be working for about $2,300, $2,400 less than the previous secretary. So this is, in effect, a net savings for the city. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Mm, any more discussion? Be none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Graf? Aye. Motion. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 765, a resolution by Alderman Susha for information estimates for the capital improvement projects. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Suspension. Your Honor. There's yes. no money in no? the no? Okay. No money information. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion second, under discussion. Thank you. Just to provide a little background, I was really dismayed last year when I sat on capital improvements because um, some of the department heads would come in with requests for you know fifty to a hundred thousand um, dollars, and they'd have no estimates in front of them, they would just be guessing. You know, For example, if one building needed a new uh, heating and air conditioning unit and they came in and said they needed $75,000, I said, well, how do you know it's going to cost $75,000? And it was based on a verbal phone conversation. And I just think it would make more sense that um, we get those types of estimates just like we would in our home. We go to different vendors and get informational estimates. They're non-binding. It's just for information, and I think it would make the job of the capital improvements a little bit easier, because right now, if you set the money aside, it's public information. So then anyone who bids on the project knows how much money you've already set aside. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Anything else? You need a roll call? No. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We've got other matters, and then before we ask for a motion to adjourn, Alderman Ratke would like to make a comment before we adjourn. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 766 is a, an RO by the Finance Director Treasurer submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated May 31, 2006, as submitted by Skipper Marine. That will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 767 is a communication received by the mayor from Michael Muth stating that he is in support of creating a dead end on 21st Street at the intersection of 21st and Calumet. And that will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 768 is communication from Asher Heimerman requesting that the city downtown be smoke free. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 769 is a communication from Jerry Hemsing, 916 Huron Avenue, stating that he believes the police station should be built behind City Hall and stating the reasons why. That will go to building use. 770 is communication from Beatrice Garski, 1712 Salmon Avenue stating her issues with road salt being dumped on her grass during snow plowing this past winter and that the grass isn't growing. She needs the city to come to rectify the problem. That will be referred to Public Works. 771 is a communication from Sarah Scott stating all of her concerns with merging police services with the Sheriff's Department and stating several ideas on how we can, can accomplish this. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 772 is a proposal from David Colton to control the bird population, or excuse me, the bird problem in the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to public protection and safety. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to take a minute here to just personally thank uh, a couple of our friends in the community. Tomorrow's Independence Day, and a lot of us are going to go out in the city and enjoy many different activities. There's a couple of, of, of businesses that stood and stepped up to the plate because city budgets keep drying up. And those two businesses I would really like to thank are Friends at Community Bank and Johnsonville Foods for providing parade and fireworks. But I don't want to forget all the other different groups that will be spreading out around the city, like the Friends at the Park, at Sheridan Park, the Community Theater Project, the Arts Center, and the many other groups that will be around the community putting on the different uh, aspects of our 4th of July celebration. Thank these people because I really want to thank them for being a part of this community and, and giving you, the citizens, a wonderful day to celebrate our country's independence. Thank you, Alderman Reckie. I think we all echo your, your uh, thank you. <laughs> Alderman Ryan, comment, uh, sir? Yes, sir. Actually, it's on a little lighter note. Um, Tomorrow, uh, with the parade, all of us aldermen and yourself, sir, are going to be uh, doing the Shoe Leather Express. Um, I've taken it upon myself. Uh, if, if people would agree, I do have some golf carts that we can ride in. They are going to be decorated in the 4th of July style. Uh, they do have front seats and back seats. 
So we can, as the golf carts stop, we can all get out and, you know, we're stopping every 20 feet anyway and do all of our uh, glad handling and everything that we want to do and maybe lighten up the mood a little bit and uh, have a good time with the parade rather than just walking up and down and sweating. So <laughs> if everybody agrees, I, I can arrange this to happen. If we don't agree, we'll walk. Okay. I would really recommend that you talk to uh, Susan Hart because all I, this I did speak to Susan okay. and Susan said that uh, I need to speak to everybody here. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but what I'm saying though is she has a uh, sequence. Yes, sir. And that sequence is pretty compact because that thing's going to last over two hours. So we'll talk to her. Thank you, Alderman. Very good. Thank Appreciate you. that. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I just wanted to thank Alderman Ryan for the offer because I would have great difficulty hoofing it. So I appreciate the use of a golf cart. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Stand adjourned. <laughs>